It is 4.45 p.m. April 5th. Yo, back at it again with another knife review. This is the Cold Steel Tylite 6. Sorry, it's hard to get this shit in frame. It's so goddamn big. I don't want to knock any shit over, fuck anything up. I'm doing this in front of my TV. Can barely get this in frame. Has a six inch blade. Overall, 13 inches. Seven inch handle. It has a kind of bayonet style grind with a, you know, false wedge on it. The designer, I'm not sure. I think, it, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's Lynn Thompson. If not, maybe Andrew Demko or both of them. I don't fucking know. It has a. Uh, Let's see, right there. Sorry, I got fingerprints all over this shit. Let me try to wipe it off. And I uh, scratched up the knife quite a bit just using it. It's about three years old and uh, from sharpening it. It has a real fucked up edge on here, the bevel. You can see. Yeah, I messed it up on this side and sharpening it when I didn't know jack shit about sharpening. Kind of fucked up the... The blade right here, the finish, yeah, the bevel. And yeah, it says Aus 8, made in Taiwan, has the old, I don't know if that's the oldest, yeah, Cold Steel logo, but one of the old logos compared to the, the one that's on my uh, SR1. And it's made out of Zytel handles right here. Pretty durable, has full liners. From uh, what I remember, there's some, you can see right there, there's a couple little cutouts right there, but that's about it. It's not skeletonized like the handles right here. And uh, I bought this about April 2019 on Amazon. It was like 45 bucks. I think that was like the cheapest uh, you can get it for at the time. But now, I think the cheapest you'll find this for is about 55 and then the highest, I think, the 60, like this version with the Aus 8 and Zytel. They're trying to sell this for like 65 in the 60s, but but about like 50 bucks now. But yeah, three years ago, you can get this for like 40, 45 bucks, but uh, not anymore from what I'm seeing. So that's not too high on the price increase, but it has increased about 10, 15, 20 bucks. And the thickness on here, it's a pretty thick knife. It's not thin at all when it's closed in the pocket like this way if you're looking at it it's about the shape of a fucking cylinder like a stick and uh you can see right here you can see a a voyager this is this ain't there's nothing thin about this knife this is a thick knife and you can see how how thin this is compared to that right here at the thickest point right here it's about yeah maybe is thin or thinner than the voyager but right there now you can see it's got like a it's got like a palm swell it widens right here when you're looking at it that way let's see it widens that way and when you're looking at it at that angle so when you're when you're gripping the blade stabbing onto something and your hand doesn't slip onto the blade as easily and the texture it's not really grippy at all it's kind of smooth not polished or anything but I'm trying to compare it I guess well there you go the Benchmade Barrage, I would say, yeah, just about the fucking same. And, yeah, doesn't really have that much texture to it. And the grips, you, you can kind of choke up on it right here. But I would say right about in the middle is where you want to hold it. And you could choke up way back here if you want to get that full fucking reach for stabbing some shit from far away, but I would say, yeah, right about there is the best grip to hold it on. And in reverse grip, you're kind of, for me, my thumb just rests right on that fucking little indent on that pocket clip. Right there, that's perfect. That's the perfect spot for me. And then if you're holding it, like, mantis grip or some shit, yeah. But reverse grip, yeah. It's perfect like that for me. And let's do a little comparison. If I can try to fit this fucking in here with all these blades. I'm trying to compare larger blades. 
the Voyager XL. And Kershaw Lucho. This has a four inch blade, this is five and a half inch, so this is one of the few cold steels I have that can dwarf the Voyager almost with the overall length. Here is a Gerber Applegate Fairbairn combat folder. Awesome blade. That one is uh, even smaller than the tie light. And here it is the Tiger Claw. These blades are like pretty much the opposite of each other. They're both kind of self defense, you know, driven knives, self defense purpose knives. But this one's. You could slice with it, but it's obviously just made for stabbing. And this one can't really stab. You can kind of stab into, you know, some shit with it, but it's just made for slicing and ripping through material. And this one's just for turning flesh to a, you know, bloody pulp, if you would say. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Both cold steels and here you go best comparison cold steel spotted XL this is a bad motherfucker G10 OS 10A steel won't even be able to fit it in on the, uh, the frame let me see try to pick up my camera here there you go put the Voyager right here next to it and let me show you while I'm doing this. You can flip all three of these open. If you hold it like that, you see. Yeah, you can just whip it like that. If you do it right, just whip it open like that. And you do the same with the Voyager. Like that. So Spada XL. You can, as big as this goddamn thing is, you can close it one-handed. Yep, just got to be careful. You don't chop off your fucking finger. And even this one, if you're holding on to the pocket clip, you know. If you don't have the pocket clip, yeah, you might not be able to do this. But yeah, you want to have a good grip on it. And you can even whip that bitch open. There you go. So, yeah. Spot of XO. The Voyager. All right. <clears throat> the usage. So this is, yeah, like I said, pretty much for self-defense. So I've only really carried it just for if I had to, you know, stab some shit in a self-defense situation. Haven't really sliced up an apple or anything like that. Haven't sliced up some paper, you know, shaving my arm hair or anything like that. And, yeah, if you're, like, you know, taking out the trash or something like that, that's what y'all would be using this knife for. If you're, you know, carrying basketball shorts or something like that, it's not, you know, as heavy as, like, an Espada XL or a, the Voyager, but it would weigh you down quite a bit, so I wouldn't really be using this for something like that. Maybe you got uh, jeans or, like, work pants or something like that, yeah. Uh, that would be good to carry it with and it has a liner lock a thick ass liner that's bent over kind of like a grid pattern shape that's a l shaped like from how the liner is right here the way it's bent has no blade play up and down side to side has a uh, bronze washers if i'm not mistaken double bronze washers you can see right there yeah and they have a variant, they have a couple of different variants. They have a, even this one, the one with the, the OS 8 steel, it has like a kind of a different style fucking handle that's like a, not a double, you know, dots right here. It's like a single, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's an older one. And then they have an S35VN steel one with all aluminum handles, like gunmetal gray or something, or black aluminum. 
And then they came out with a Lynn Thompson like special edition signed version that was a had a crisp blade and then a green Zytel handles, I think. And uh, I I really wanted to get that just to do a blade swap low key. I wanted to throw the fucking uh, the Os Eight blade just with, on the green handle and throw the the crisp blade on the black handle because I didn't really care for the crisp blade that much. So that's about it and. Uh, is it worth it for the 45 bucks? I would say yeah. Even for the 60 bucks, I would say yeah, I would still pay for it, but if you got it for cheaper then obviously that's a better deal. So, that's about it. That's my Cold Steel Tylite 6 3-year review. Later.